Because a few of you have asked me, and because I'm just really excited about them, I'm just going to take a moment to show you all my shoes today. They say, unstoppable and ambitious. I'm kind of in love with them. Um, so today's conversation was actually supposed to be um, a conversation with Joteka Edi from LendUp, as well as Allison Sanbongi, our director of account management here at AppNexus. And um, unfortunately, due to a last minute issue, we had to change things up a little bit. And so I've um, put together a, a brief talk here, um, trying to summarize the conversation that Joteka and Allison and I were planning to have with you all. So um, beyond the echo chamber, so about three years ago, Google started this conversation within technology around diversity and inclusion. And they really did this by publishing their diversity statistics on their blog. At that point in time, I think they were pretty much at the very front of, uh, the, very front of the industry on doing this. And since then, a number of companies have followed suit, including AppNexus. Um, but when they did it, it really created and catalyzed this conversation within technology companies, including a conversation here at AppNexus. But since then, where have we really come as women in terms of being represented in the workplace? You know, none of these statistics are great, and as much as I um, am really passionate about and love the efforts that we're also doing here at AppNexus, I think we can agree that all of these technology companies have a lot more work to do. We talked a little bit earlier today about some of the recent headlines in Silicon Valley and within the tech industry. But when is it going to stop? I mean, seriously, this, it, it can't continue, right? We absolutely cannot get to this point next year at our next Women's Leadership Forum and have Catherine and Alicia and many of the others feeling as though they've been continued to be slapped in the face over the course of the year. I think we can all agree it sucks to be slapped in the face, right? Like, that is not a good way to feel. So how, as you, how do we break that echo chamber? Well, first, I think um, one of the things that we can do is we change the numbers. We have to change our organization's demographics. This is a picture from a blog post that AppNexus posted earlier this April, um, where we undertook some commitments on how we were actually going to change the demographics around the organization. Um, it's really throughout the organization, from the top all the way to the bottom, how we were going to become more diverse. It requires intentionality. It requires targets and a commitment. You have to hire more women. You have to sponsor more women who are coming up the path behind you. And not just the women, mind you. I think we all have an obligation, not just to help the women beside us and behind us, but also other underrepresented groups. It's a long play, and it requires time. It's expensive, right? It's a long time. To, you have to be committed and invest the money and energy into finding these hires and making them. But we're going to hear from Reshma Saljani from Girls Who Code later. If you can't see it, you can't be it. The pipeline is there, but the onus is on us to show them what they can be in order to join our company so that we can actually attract them. The second thing that we have to do is we have to change behaviors. We have to demand inclusive leadership. This means equal representation, equal pay, objective promotion standards, equitable promotions, and no more bros club. Right? We can demand that. This is the way that we hold ourselves, each of us as leaders within our organization. And it's the standards that we hold our peers to operate by as well as they work alongside us. It requires intentionality, and it requires courage. Inclusive leadership is free, but it's hard. So what do you do? Right? There's this uh, Corn Ferry study. Wade Davis just talked to us about how having to show the data is a tax. So you've paid your tax, you've talked to your leaders, you've tried to convince them of why diversity and inclusive uh, environments are good for business, and they're just not buying into it. What do you do? I was at a conference the other week, and a general counsel at another technology company said to me, she said, I just can't convince my CEO that diversity and inclusion is something that's important and that he needs to pay attention to. So what should I do? And in the moment, I gave her some ideas on things that she could do. I did all of the things that Wade Davis just told us that we should not do. I told her, I said, you can start a women's network. You can have a conversation. This is what we did at AppNexus. Show them the data. 
And I walked away from her and I realized afterwards that actually I had given her terrible advice. So that brings me to my third point. What do you do? You walk away. How could that woman in any case think that that CEO and that company was going to pay her equitably and promote her fairly if they didn't even believe in the business case for diversity? Like, it makes no sense. She should leave. So walk. Don't whisper. No whisper networks. Don't roll over. Don't wait. Don't compromise yourself. Walk out. Not yet. Stay till the end of our show. We have a little bit longer to go. <laughs> but seriously, Hillary said it best. Human rights are women's rights, and women's rights are human rights. This is just what I deserve, right? If you work in an environment where that, that's not the case, vote with your feet. Don't stand on it. Don't stand for it. Because that's the way that you really change mindsets. So change the numbers, change the behaviors, and change the mindset. Demand diversity, demand inclusive leadership, and demand a seat at the table because you all deserve it. Thank you.